All right, good evening, guys. I'm going to try and get this mic set up. Can we hear? Check. Good. 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 Up. A little bit up. All right, uh, so my name is Eric Burns, and uh, similar to what everybody else is doing, we're going to talk about the future of Philadelphia. Um, in just a second, we're going to take a deep breath. Good. Okay, so first I wanted to start about and talk about in kind of the context of these three ideas of industry and energy production, urban parks, and the city as a whole, density. Um, so that's really going to be kind of the framework for this whole talk today. This is a nice little sketch I did while I was at work taking a break from Revit. Um, so hopefully you can appreciate hand drawing. So first, we're going to start with the country as a whole. Um, so the United States, so cities are a big deal, as I'm sure we're kind of all aware of. Philadelphia being the fifth largest city in the country, there's over 100 cities in the country that have over 100,000 people in them. So cities are going to be a big deal, and they're going to be a bigger deal as we go into the future. So really designing for how they're going to have their impact on the world. Um, so with that, I wanted to talk about waste, something that we don't really think about quite that much. Um, every year across the United States, we get rid of 250,000 tons of municipal solid waste. So that's everything that goes into your trash um, Tuesdays, Sundays, whenever they collect trash here in the city. Um, but the big deal with this garbage and stuff they're putting out there um, is the 155 million tons of organic waste. Um, so this is waste that goes into a landfill and it doesn't just have all the detriments of polluting the world that we live in, but also continues um, being detrimental by producing greenhouse gases and being one of the leading causes of climate change. We often think of cars as being the big deal, but really buildings and landfills are also a big deal as well. Um, so here's a look at kind of some of the gases that landfills give off. Um, if you take a close look at the top two there, methane gas and carbon dioxide, those are the ones we're going to kind of focus on now. Um, and in just a second, we'll take a look um, at the EPA put out the top four uh, greenhouse gases that are affecting climate change and are really the big ones to watch out for. And lo and behold, you see again there, there's methane gas at the top and CO2. Um, methane gas is a little bit less than CO2 that it produces, but it's a much heavier gas and it causes a lot more um, capture of heat, um, so it's really a bigger issue. Um, and going back to that idea of buildings and the impact that they have, um, buildings in the U.S. and really characterize 40% of energy usage, as well as 72% of the electricity that we use, and that's even supposed to go up to about 75% by the year 2025. So really making an impact with buildings and how we look at them is really going to be important. Um, so we have all these ideas coming together now. I've got landfills, buildings, um, production, energy production, um, and now we're going to talk about kind of the bacteria aspect of it, how um, these greenhouse gases are formed and how we can utilize what it's producing to uh, really help our cities and Philadelphia in general. Um, so one way that they're doing that is landfill gas um, collection, energy production. So this is a list showcasing all the landfills across the country um, and which ones are actively participating in landfill gas, which we'll talk about landfill gas and how that works. Um, but as of right now, there's about 3,000 active landfills across the U.S. and 10,000 inactive ones that are continuing to off gas and really be detrimental. Um, so this is a diagram showing how landfill gas generation works from dumping the garbage um, to separating out the moisture to harvesting the gas from that and then being able to dilute that and run it through generators to produce electricity and energy. So a lot of these landfills um, are using this system currently right now. Um, and one of the key elements in that is gathering the landfill gas itself. Um, so finding a way to do that through anaerobic digestion chambers, which would be really important later on as we go through. It's, it's a very technical aspect to this. Um, but this was about sizing um, chamber sizes and coming up with what sizes and how much tonnage of garbage that could take and how much gas that was going to produce. Um, and here we have um, two different types. So the bottom one is basically the whole thing that I'm proposing, really convoluted and confusing. Um, so we're, we're going to get a simplified one. Um, the top one just looking at cogeneration plants compared to regular traditional energy plants. Um, and cogeneration plants are what we're going to focus on and we'll talk about a little bit. And this is the simplified version of it. Um, so basically it goes from garbage getting dropped off, broken down, um, and then piped into these chambers where it produces methane gas, which can be then purified and used to produce energy um, for buildings, to create electricity, to heat buildings, which is a really nice aspect of it. Um, and then looking at a site, it's a really linear process. It wants to work kind of boom, boom, boom. Um, so finding a site like that, one that really jumped forward for me was the 676 Vine Street Expressway. Finding a way to utilize this 
greatly underutilized area of Philadelphia, as well as being able to provide and generate revenue as well as a sustainable future for Philadelphia. Um, so where is all this waste coming from? So the average American um, produces about 0.5 pounds of food waste a day, which doesn't seem like that much until you put into the scale of months or years or lifetimes. It's over 14,000 tons um, per lifetime per person. Um, and if we look at Philadelphia itself, um, there's about 1.5 million of us, and it's only expected to go up. Um, I think Philadelphia is finally increasing in population, so that's a positive. Um, but that over 274 million pounds of organic waste, uh, waste that we can use to create energy and become a producer um, of sustainable energy for Philadelphia, as well as become an importer of other areas in this area. Um, so to get an idea of the Vine Street Expressway community, besides the food waste that they produce, I wanted to look at kind of um, where they're getting their gas from, what they're utilizing, and what they kind of are looking for. Um, so a lot of active people in this area from the Fairmont community, as well as Spring Garden, um, Logan Square, and all those areas. Um, and this is looking at a more, it brought a long idea of where these anaerobic chambers come in. We have a 676 Vine Street Expressway underneath anaerobic chambers, and then these uh, gas energy production plants, and a park over top of it. So really finding multi-purpose use of these spaces in creating architecture that is helpful to the area and underutilized spaces. Um, these are just another few renderings looking at spaces. So having this continuous park that produces energy and utilizes it to create um, a more sustainable area. Um, so it's just some nice little views here. I'm going to take a break. Just look at it. Um, and then, wow, that really goes a lot faster when you're up here. This is the, this is the last slide. Um, just looking at the groundscape. Um, it's really a fly-by-wire right now. Um, but if you guys have any other questions, feel free to email me. Um, there's an email somewhere. I, think it's really so I know it's really technical. Or talk to me. That's probably the easiest to do. Um, but thank you, guys.